Welcome to We Are Libertarians. I'm your host, Chris Spangle. We Are Libertarians brings you all of the irreverence modern politics deserves, and boy does it. Think of us as the love child of National Review and Mad Magazine. We explain to you what the hell is happening in our world today and how we can fix it by thinking differently. Please be sure to rate and review us on iTunes, like us on Facebook, share this episode with friends, and support us through PayPal or Patreon at wearelibertarians.com. We are supported by listeners like you, so $1 per episode by pledging $5 a month helps us grow. We are always taking your questions and comments via email at editor at wearelibertarians.com. If you uh, need life advice from Dear Leader or the many successes of the We Are Libertarians cast, please send us an email, a political question, romance question, whatever, hog feeding question. We've got, we've got experts on that, too. If you are new to the program, we catch up for the first 20 minutes or so, then deep dive into analyzing current events in society from a libertarian perspective. This show is for adults, by semi-adults, so please be warned the language is strong and offensive. With us is, as always, Greg Lenz. Greg, how are you doing? I'm doing well, buddy. How are you feeling after your uh, reconciliation with the one and only Rob Kendall? It's been uh, it's been an up and down uh, 24 hours. If you haven't listened to yesterday's show, uh, then you heard that Rob and I have, have come together. I felt he was very insulting, though. Did you? Did, did you not? I felt that it went as well as it possibly could have. I felt that he, he was very uh, insulting. Jeremiah Morrill, you're with us as well. Dear leader, hello. Have you caught up uh, with that? I did. I, I listened to it today. Did you? Feel- I didn't do show prep. I listened to you and Rob. Okay. Did you feel that <laughs> I thought Rob- the apology is more important than Greg's uh, Greg's notes? Did you feel that it was a good apology? Uh, I think you both met as close to halfway as you could. All right. And, and still walking out with uh, without being too ashamed of yourselves. <laughs> Harry Price is with us as well. Harry, how are you? Going good, going good. Hanging out with Gunther mostly today. Yeah? How's that going? That's going good. Uh, yeah. I did do some show prep watching videos, but mostly I was um, hanging out with uh, hanging out with my daughter. She's finally one month old. Excellent. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Also with us is Kat Anagnos. Kat, how are you? Hello. I'm great. How are you? Uh, out and finally a woman. Nice to have you here. Thank you. Yeah, it's... Uh, <clears throat> been great honestly uh, i've gotten a lot of attention which i love <laughs> qatar is in a uh, shitload of trouble as they as the, is the technical term and so uh donald trump goes to saudi arabia mm-hmm. and he makes nice with uh you know the saudi arabians gives them a nice weapons deal a couple days after he leaves largest weapons deal in the history of the united states right to saudi arabia where how many of the 9-11 terrorists were from Saudi Arabia? 28 to 30. Yeah, damn near all. <laughs> right. Yeah. A couple of Moroccans. Uh, right. They are they're, uh, huge funders of terrorism. Um, and that's the thing is it's, it, you are in a difficult situation because so their new prince, Salman, is, is a, a modern Western um, individual. And he's, he's very – he is not someone – I would be shocked if he was someone that wouldn't crack down on the support – of uh, the rogue princes funding ISIS and those types of organizations, radical Sunni organizations. But he is also in a situation where he needs the arms in order to stop the, you know, Iran is growing and Iran's influence is growing in the region. That's why you have the uh, Huethi or Huethani rebels in Yemen that overthrew the government. And so they're actively, you know, fighting a real, real war campaign in right. Yemen to reinstall the former leader. And then Iran is... Uh, the only thing that Qatar did wrong is that they have not disavowed Iran so and have still conducted trade with them. Let's back up. So uh, get back on the timeline. So Donald Trump goes there. Well, the – the what is it? The Gulf Coast Consortium or uh, – it's like yeah. this group of, of Libya, Egypt – It's the Sunni OPEC states. Right. It's Libya, Egypt. It's Saudi Arabia. It's Yemen, uh, United Arab Emirates, and Bahrain. And then on the Saudi, if you think of Saudi Arabia, down in the bottom right is Oman, which I didn't even know was a com- a country until yeah. uh, this all happened. Uh, and then uh, King of Oman, Qatar is like on the on the pinky side of the hand, right on the water, <laughs> right on the water. But one of our Beach largest mi- uh, U.S. military bases right. is in Oman. Ten thousand Ameri- ten thousand American troops, and it's right across from. Uh, the Strait of Hormuz Muse from uh, Iran. Iran. And this is the largest GDP 
uh, per capita income in the world. Yeah, they're in the top nine in per capita in fifty two period. So yeah, they have a GD. They have a sovereign wealth fund with three hundred thirty five billion in it. Their government is the one that produces Al Jazeera. Yep, and that's so, what it's based out of. So you remember, if you listen to the show report in the feed back in the day when Al Jazeera came to America, Qatar was basically saying, we'll throw as much money as we have to at America. We want to get in there. They have the third largest um, natural gas field in the world. Right. And, and so they've been exploring for the last five to seven years whether or not they were going to build a competing pipeline with the Russians through Syria, which is why they supported regime change in Syria, because they are a, a country that... So only 12% of their population are actual Qatar... Uh, Qatar uh, for cutter natives right 88 percent are foreign workers it's it is the most populous the the largest group the largest ethnicity in qatar is indian yep is indian then qatari then uh arabs weren't even on the list no no um and so it it is uh, uh an incredibly wealthy nation doha is their capital where al jazeera right. was at and they have uh, they have helped America out of a lot of jams. So in, it's in, a very it's it's a very westernized area. Right? Yeah, I absolutely. Mean, it, it, Great Britain was in there until they gave them their independence in the sixties. Yeah, right. until yeah, right you after know, Sykes. Like, they they use English as businesses. If you're a Westerner, you want to go to the UAE or or Qatar. Right. It, so when Sykes Peacock was drawn up, um, the French had Libya, Syria, um, most of the more of the more Shia states, except for the British had Iran, obviously. Right. And this is something that goes all the way back to then, is that the British had the influence there, and they were under their direction, and so that's why you have the Indi uh, the British school system and westernized influence. So you have uh, this, and, and it's amazing, it's a very small country, but Tiny. It, it has a ton of oil and natural gas. Oh yeah, it's got third largest, but the thing is, they hadn't gone into production, because Russia is the natural gas pipeline to Europe. So when right. Russia decides, they can shut off the natural gas and freeze out Europe in the winter. Right. That's always been their leverage, and they've, why, why they've always not wanted a competing pipeline through Syria, and why they prop up Assad. Right. So but if you go back to the Olympics, um, the, king, or the head of... Uh, Cutter actually threatened, had a prince threaten um, Vladimir Putin that he was going to have issues with Sunni radicals Always a good if, idea. If, if he kept propping up Assad. Right. And so that's when they were more allied with Sunni, Sunni radicals in uh, the Sunni states. Right. As they realized that, this, that Russia wasn't going to back out and the United States wasn't going to pursue regime, regime change, that's when they decided to more, form more of an alliance with Iran. Because right. they saw Iran as the, the basic like geopolitics has completely changed because the majority of oil and natural gas in the Middle East is now under Shia land rather than Sunni, right. and that's why the Shia, the Shia or uh, Sunni countries are really not liking um, Sunni countries being Libya, Saudi Arabia, Libya, Egypt. Uh, um, Egypt, and then United Arab Emirates, Bahrain. Even like so, t United Arab Emirates made it a crime today. If you if a journal a press outlet published something sympathetic towards Cutter and like the food shortages, that they it's punishable by a fifteen thousand dollar crime and a year in prison. Wow! Anything just sympathetic in the press. So the uh, the other part of this is is that C Cutter is a major funder of Hamas and a major funder of the Muslim Brotherhood. Allegedly. Allegedly, but they are. <laughs> Everybody kind of knows it. And it's so, just like Teddy Rabe is a the primary financier of ISIS. Right. And so you have... Um, which and is, the 9-11 bomb, you know. Which is hilarious that Hasn't Trump is so... Yet. Yes, Trump is so anti-ISIS and we're basically giving weapons to the people that mainly support ISIS. Right. You know, it's the nature of businesses. It, you, know, you understand that... Um, there is no you, if you if you go after the Saudis, is you're going to have rogue acts like happening in Britain. Right. It's better for America if they drive Ram trucks instead of Toyotas. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Like ISIS. Right. <laughs> so, so they're major funders of terrorism. Which Donald Trump went to Saudi Arabia and uh, came back with the impression that Qatar is just they're bad guys. They're real bad over there. They're but terrible, we're refusing to really guys. take a side. We're our not. State Department, our ambassador came out today and talked about the reforms they'd made. Of course. And how what an excellent job they've done of leadership under this government. Yeah. but Because Donald, we have our base yeah. there. Donald Trump undermined all of that in a tweet. Yes. 
I mean, he. I, I don't. I don't have. Harry's the tweet queuing it up over here. So good to see. Uh, I'm going back to the X. I'm done. I'm not doing that. So good to see the Saudi Arabia visit with the king and 50 countries already paying off. They said they would take a hard line on funding extremism, extremism, and all references from pointing to Qatar. Perhaps this will be the beginning of the end of horror of terrorism. So he is so eager to satisfy his ego and proclaim a win for his presidency because he's so under attack in his mind over the Russian stuff that he's now undermining a country that houses 10,000 American troops. It's absolutely is, critical to their, to it's their the only access. It is where CENTCOM is. Yeah. You've, heard of, you've heard of CENTCOM in the last 15 J- years. I have Mattis quarters. was the head of, head of CENTCOM right. in the last administration. It is our main forward base into Iraq and Afghanistan. Libya, Syria, uh, that All is our access This point. is our safe location. Right. This yeah. Is, yeah. And so you'd think that he would understand that and understand that this is a strategic ally that needs to, you know, maybe not kiss their ass, but just keep your mouth shut, Donald. You know what I mean? Like, well, you got to remember too. Like, so they, it, it, there isn't a good way to do it, and so good cop, bad cop almost is the right strategy because they, the what's driving all this is they had sit on the world's third largest, like, uh, liquefied natural gas, their largest export. It's what funds everything. They've also haven't even tapped their largest uh, natural gas field. Sure. Mm-hmm. They conducted five to seven year study with the best consultants, and then that's when it'll be another five to seven years is when it'll be operational. And they decided to go ahead and do it. This kills oil uh, or a natural gas prices uh, for Saudi Arabia, which is going to ultimately become their number one because oil demand is slowly dropping. You know, peak oils turned out to be a fraudulent thing, right. but natural gas demand is projected to skyrocket. Right. And so they're going to sell to China. They're going to try to enter the global market, which will kill the prices for Libya, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, um, any any Sunni-led regime. And that is how they buy their complicit, like the complicity of the citizens, is they subsidize all food and oil, right? So that they can live a lifestyle that is, you know, fairly decent without any employment opportunities and heavily repressed. But they are able to maintain um, doing so through these subsidies. That's what caused the Arab Spring is when we did um, quantitative easing, all their currencies were pegged to ours. So by tripling the money supply, none of the citizens could afford to eat or drive anymore. Right. And so there was mass unrest. Yeah. And so you, you walk a really fine line. Their decision to enter the free market and provide natural gas undermines every authoritarian Sunni regime in the region. Yeah, and they were major funders of the Musl- of the Arab Spring, which all of those countries hold against them. Because they wanted Assad toppled so they could build a pipeline through Syria exactly. and compete with Russia to sell natural gas. And right. so you think about Egypt, where they funded mo- uh, the Muslim Brotherhood and the unrest there. I mean, the Muslim Brotherhood took over the country, and, right. and it became uh, an Islamic extremist state. So right. Well, now it's propped up by... Um, Cece, the right. the guy that went to the U.S. War College that we picked in the uh, overthrow. Mm-hmm. So we went from ultimately one American propped up dictator to another, right? <laughs> and like the, the thing was, they were betting that you know democracy democracy would spread under Morsi, uh, or what was his name? Was he the one that won the election democratically and then implemented Sharia law? Uh, Mohammed Morsi or Brun- uh, no, it wasn't the Western guy, was, was it? Uh, the, Peter Francis no. Dracy. Peter Francis, the, the bankruptcy yeah. attorney. Yeah. He is in a shocking yeah. upset. In the, yeah. No, but he ended up... The um, there, whoever yeah, the military w- took him out because he, they couldn't agree on anything, but I can't remember his name. Yeah, yeah I know who you're talking about. Yeah, you know who I'm talking about. That, mm-hmm. The guy that was democratically elected that's now sitting in jail, that, and then we, had, we propped up the general to take over, that's who they backed because that would allow them more influence in the region to build this pipeline. Sure. Because no bank right now, uh, the major financiers of these pipelines, you need huge consortiums of money to build these through multi-countries. Mm-hmm. The risk is so high, they all backed out. And so mm-hmm. luckily, though, Cutter's so rich, um, they th- people were expecting a food, uh, food crisis. There were pictures of all of the uh, supermarkets being empty. Uh, just last, you know, at the day after it was announced, because they thought it was going to be starvation, and that turned out to actually to be a fake news story. Really, really. Well, the main the main food truck entrance. I mean, the the main entrances for food are on the land entrances from Saudi Arabia into Qatar, and they import ninety percent of their food. Right. So it, it's important that they have uh, active borders. Well, so then the Qatari Airways, the only airline, they actually the way they're situated, they have almost no airspace. So because this entire group of Arab countries have now banned their Qatari Airways from being able to go into any of the airspace they need to make the international flights, or even the flights into other countries, now is grounded. Hmm. 
they literally cannot they fly. They can't get out over the over they can't, the sea. They cannot get out over the sea because that is controlled by um, uh, Yemen. Really. Even all the way up around into the Strait of Hormuz? They can't no. leave their country. Right now, the Qatari Airways cannot leave their country, and it, it's tiny. But why well, does, let's see why them start does, shooting down passenger planes. But yeah. Ye- Yemen yeah. Yemen is way down on on the thumb part of Saudi Arabia. Why are they controlling the airways up by the by the pinky part? It was divvied up uh, a long time ago, the actual who has the air rights. I really do appreciate that Spangled uses the, his <laughs> hand like what you do for Michigan. That's yeah, right. For right. the right. Middle East. Yeah, it's for the Middle East. <laughs> you turn the mitten upside down. <laughs> well, listen. We this are, is the Persian Gulf. We need the to, thumb is Detroit or the UAE, yeah. depending <laughs> upon which, which hand you're using. If, if you're a listener in a God. car and you can't... <laughs> Google map this like I did furiously the other night when Greg proposed this as a topic. Well, I mean, it, it's then, major. <laughs> then you need then you need the hand. Everybody <laughs> gets that. You know, you've got Saudi Arabia and the thumb is where uh, what's the place with the rock that they all worship? Uh, Medina. Ma- Medina. And Mes- that's that's off. Medina Medina's is where Muhammad was born. Right. Mecca is where he is buried inside of the black cube. Right. Mecca is over by the thumb and then up at the top by your uh, index finger. You got Egypt. Yeah, you think. got Egypt, Morocco's at right. the very top. What's first the country. middle finger? The, the middle mi- finger would be Libya, Morocco. No, 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 no. That's Africa. That's on the left hand. The horn. Right. <laughs> I'm talking about Saudi Arabia. Hand. Oh, the, okay, yeah. So you have Saudi Arabia, Iran, Iraq. Just, you know, the, just the, the little skin tag part. Yeah. Skin tag part. <laughs> that's, a look, and that's what it, Saudi Arabia has always looked like, the skin tag on the map. <laughs> and they, they're, 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 they're really right struggling. Right underneath the fingernail, right? Right. <laughs> a big part of this is they are really, really struggling to maintain control of the provinces that aren't all that loyal to the crown yeah you know so in the southeast in qatar or in saudi arabia saudi arabia okay where because they still have you know even though they're about 75 percent sunni they still have um 25 percent shia who all of the oil and natural gas that's the land that it's under and so going into all this you have isis who's really felt the squeeze because now saudi arabia had an out to disavow them because of Qatar's alleged, you know, financing of extremist organizations. And the American people don't understand the difference between Sunni and Shia. They just think all Muslims are the same. And so that's why today in the Iranian par- or, uh, Iranian parliament, ISIS sent in jihadists in uh, suicide vests dressed as women with guns and killed 12 sitting congressmen. They walked in with suicide vests and blew them up. And they're, the Saudis are going to continue covertly uh, uh, creating this kind of turmoil as blowback against any of the Shia regimes. Mm. Mm. I remember when I said that was coming out. That was like just kind of rough to even like to read about. Yeah, like they, they went in dressed as women in burqas and then uh, you know pulled a suicide vest and took out twelve congressmen. Yep. Cat. Yes. Anything to add? Is this our wrap up? No. <laughs> oh. Do you have anything about? You've just been uh, quiet, cat. Yeah. I honestly have been playing with this like purple silly putty stuff. Even shared it, cat. I've had to See. talk about Middle cat. Eastern politics over here instead of playing with silly putty. See, you don't know anything stuck about here. Ge- geo uh, geopolitical chess. Yes. Forty chess. No, sorry. Harry's cat. cat. Harry's playing woman. weatherman over here. He's look. I'm all I'm supposed to do is answer the door, get drinks, like wash the dishes. Look pretty on the Instagram. Look nice on the Instagram. You're our aesthetic. I'm the aesthetic. Like, I don't have a brain. I don't know anything about politics. No, cat, cat, cat goes. Listen, I am libertarian. I don't know as much policy stuff as you guys. I'll just be the comedy relief. <laughs> I was like, okay, you're in. No, I agree. <laughs> with, should with, buy the, all the, with the suicide bombing. Are you on the side of the president or on the side of the she, state department? No, she was pro suicide bombing. <laughs> oh, that's, <laughs> that's right. She, right. Yeah. I, I didn't hear her condemn women. it. No. You're with us or against us. This is the axis of evil. I'm tired I'm of your you tweets undermining dear leader, Cat. I, I know that we're darn near three hours at this point, but we yeah. have, I don't no, know no, that no. we have even touched uh, touched the London Bridge deal. Uh, it's falling down? I love Fergie. How much that's longer, longer do we have to, to be at this place? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I mean, that's... Th- Some of th- us have to go back to Muncie. That's an extension of like the Islamic State, which is just gr- radically getting more desperate because of their financing being cut off. And so they're actually, they're picking the wrong fight right now. I have now, no and fil- idea what you're talking about. The Islamic State has been, uh, they've decided to just have lone wolf attacks with knives. ISIS. Right. right. So ISIS, though, it has people all over. And so like the London attacks, um, this is a guy that went to, on a, on a visit to Morocco. He was married, white wife in Britain, comes back from Morocco, radicalized, all of a sudden makes her start wearing a burqa and then goes and stabs up uh, Ariana Grande. 
No, that was the blown up. And then the guy who drove a truck into the London Bridge. Yep. And so these are called upon by the Islamic State. And then you had a guy at Notre Dame, uh, Notre Dame Cathedral yesterday show up with knives and and something, a hammer? Yeah, hammer. Yeah. Hammers. And yeah. then they, you know, they Logan Clarked him, took him out. Yep. Um, I thought the thing about the Ariana Grande concert was like, they didn't know yet. They were calling it like a tragic incident instead of a terrorist attack. Tra- tragic. Tragic. Just like Cologne. Tragic. Right, right. Oh, God. <laughs> but, yeah, so there's, this is increasingly what's happening, but ISIS is now so squeezed on their oil resources, and they have no ability. They're actually moving all of their cash out of their uh, their actual territory because they're lo- – and they're having to go through uh, – buy, like, prepaid credit cards oh. or debit cards. That's how they're getting their – since uh, international finance laws, like, in order to yeah. track terrorist funding and money laundering, are so advanced now mm-hmm. that they're having to, like, literally go to, like, spring one fina- – like, those <laughs> – Springfield Financial are like yeah. the place where you, if you don't have credit, you can go and get auto loans. <laughs> yeah. Like, and then they're having to get, uh, start open electronic stores and go buy a whole bunch of prepaid debit and credit cards to get their money out. They're being financed by Wood Forest Bank. Down it, 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 honestly, that's what's going yeah. on. That's the kind of organizations they're going to. And so their only place no. now where they're not being pursued radically or like really um, with mili- U.S. military and then European NATO military intervention and pursuit is in the Philippines, yeah. which is absolutely batshit insane because that's where they make all their money from the drugs, from mm-hmm. the drug trade, mm-hmm. you know, from the poppy fields of Afghanistan is that mm-hmm. they get their heroin out of the Philippines. And they have President Duarte, who <laughs> one of his campaign videos is like throwing throwing an Islamic or a, a drug ping- kingpin out of the helicopter and like jokes about it. <laughs> like, he's literally Scarface. Yeah. As the president, and it's because the drug trade has crippled their country yep. and has taken over, and they have mass drug problems. So they elected the former mayor that is just an absolute madman. Oh, God. Makes Trump look like the most civilized guy on the planet. And he is backed by the Chinese, but he is also now saying that he welcomes ISIS oh, because God. he can't wait to eliminate him. <laughs> and they're, they've issued like a bounty on his head, and he he goes out of the presidential palace without any security <laughs> in a um i want to say it wasn't an ak but it was another on uh, he hit mp5 it was MP5. an mp5 yeah and like it says how he can't wait to take them on and eradicate them like dogs yep. and so i that that's isis's next you know because people don't realize indonesia and the philippines are like about 80 percent muslim and mm-hmm. that's where they've been mm-hmm. operating out of and uh, that's going to be the next attack but my god if you think vladimir putin and the mob are bad this guy's like Tony Montana, yeah. loaded up on coke, like f- flying out, of, leaning out of a helicopter, like Sarah Palin hunting, you know, moose. It's like uh, Jim, <laughs> Jim, Jimmy Mad Dog made us the other day. Was in an interview. <laughs> oh, that was beautiful. And, and somebody goes, "What keeps you up at night?" Nothing. I keep other people up at night. Wasn't that the best answer you've ever heard? <laughs> My nips got so hard. <laughs> I did. I about spontaneously combusted into a bald eagle. It was the most patriotic I've ever felt. All right, yeah. so final. give us the final analysis on the, the Qatar situation. From a libertarian perspective, it really we should be supporting their entrance into the global marketplace. You know, We should like it that there is going to be a new competitor to Russia. It undermines Russia's influence by offering a new competitor to Europe to buy natural gas. It, uh, they are incredibly wealthy, and we conduct a lot of trade for as small as they are uh, for selling American products into Qatar. And it's one of those the, – we're actually doing it okay. Like, we're selling to the Saudis. We're selling to Qatar. We're, we need to work on opening up Iran. Mm-hmm. And we need to extricate ourselves from the Middle Eastern dilemma through trade. The only problem is, as always, Israel – because the only thing that unites Sunni and Shias are the Jews and their hatred for them. <laughs> so as long as the Su- where Israel lays low and it just turns into a Muslim battle, we should in- continue funding both sides. But we should also – Iran is who we should have ultimately support because they're going to win anyway in the long run because they are going to be on top of the most natural gas. Right. You know? uh, I think that this um, – I think it illustrates kind of uh, – I think the Trump administration will illustrate libertarian foreign policy and, well, we can't just not lead the world. The chaos will ensue. Well, chaos has ensued with us leading the world, and now that we're, uh, now that, you know. Chaos is the norm. Right. Uh, I felt Obama took a much, uh, uh, he stepped back from the Bush doctrine that America must lead and America must intervene. intervene. 
in other countries, and Obama took a step back from that, and Donald Trump is an even further step back from that. He's he is outright playing both sides and not hiding it. And, and, well, yeah. he, it's you're just which I am like that's ballsy yeah. as shit. In, but when yeah. you're the world's largest last superpower, you can do it. In, yeah, in incompetence or intergalactic chess, it does not matter to me. We're we're barely involved in world affairs. It's a straight yo Jimbo. What <laughs> it is? Yeah. What does that it's, mean? Uh, Yojimbo is a uh, Japanese uh, uh, tale of a, or a movie you could watch. Really cool movie about this like assassin who's really really good at his job, and he mm -hmm. played both gangs in yeah. one town. So he Satoshi. played both he's of the, them. Again. He's yeah. like uh, Nicholas Cage in Lord of War, where yeah. he'll sell. You know, he's selling to everybody, but mm -hmm. whatever room he's in, that's whose side he's on. Harry yep. just went full Satoshi. He did. You could watch the Kurt Bruce Willis Wall. version of the movie Last Man Standing. <laughs> With uh, Bruce Willis, I love that TV show. No, Just no, no, that's Tim Allen. Trump. That's Tim Allen. That's a Tim Allen TV show. Yeah, it is. I, was I said say. Bruce Willis, Last Man Standing. That's the movie with Bruce Willis and uh, Christopher Walken. It's based off of the Japanese show um, Yojimbo. Yeah, but, but, they, I, I think but it's, it's a straight Yojimbo it, movie. Yeah. People, this is the thing: is like it's it's everyone's so critical that he's going out and outright speaking the the polar opposite of what Secretary Tillerson's saying his State Department appointee, what the ambassador to Qatar is saying, and selling funds to Saudi Arabia, as well as being the primary ex or, uh, import provider of food, and then, well, eventually, now it'll be food, and then we also buy a ton of their natural gas. And that's what we would want as a libertarian. We want to not pick sides and just conduct trade with whatever regime it is. The reality, though, is that if Israel ever gets involved, we're going to pick whoever they don't want. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is really just shut up. But yeah, it looks stupid. It looks amateurish. It is amateurish. But if it we're going to talk about like what a libertarian policy would be, it would be sell to both sides. And I think you're yeah. going you're going to find that the world is not going to come to an end. We're not going to slip into World War Three just because America is not that America is starting to be more non-interventionist under this administration, mostly due to incompetence. But we'll partly, take it. We'll take yeah. it. <laughs> Well, I mean, that undermines confidence in government. That's right. that's the best libertarian marketing, you know, yeah. uh, promotional material we could have. I, we've already bombed a number of countries since he took over. I don't know how non-interventionalist you want to pretend that he yeah. is. Yeah, it's true. <clears throat> but well, uh, in comparison to Barack Obama, he's hugely non. Oh, he's yeah. way behind the pace. But I mean, <laughs> the Obama he's administration like, wanted out, to. We're out of the Paris Accords. Qatar, gutter, whatever your name is, fuck off. Unless you want to buy, <laughs> right? Yeah. Then I'll come and touch your rock, right? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I, I mean, honestly, like if it, would price. you is the right libertarian thing to just not sell to anybody? Right. Correct. Yeah, it's peace for a cheap price. It's a bargain. And if, if it ends up with us not having a military base in the Middle East anymore, the right I'm all libertarian for it. thing isn't the government being in the middle of the transactions. You let your private companies make these sales. They are, yeah. but the, you know the government has to approve them for right now. Yeah. But I mean, we yeah. can't just overnight take away the State Department's approval of selling weapons. Yeah. Eh, do we need a State Department? No, we don't. Yep. That's why they cut their funding by uh, next this calendar year. They took away 43% of the State Department's funding. Secretary Tillerson committed to a 43% cut of their budget. Nice. Which is everything we should want. Yeah. I'm with it. Yeah. Right. I'm down for it. Oh, yeah. All right. Final thoughts for this episode. Let's start wrapping up. Uh, little Duck, Clabby, Clabby and Abinus. <laughs> Cl oh. Chloe, Cat. Yeah. What's your name? <laughs> uh, something like that. No, uh, I didn't really know much about this situation before, so I feel enlightened. Do you? I feel mm -hmm. much smarter. At least you know how to draw it on your hand. What? Yeah. Oh, right. No, yeah, yeah the glove thing. Yeah. yeah. Or the Use your left hand, turn it over. It's very mm -hmm. important. If I know so much now. If Creeper Paint it brown. <laughs> what? Paint it brown. <laughs> oh, no. For the Middle East. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Very racist. <laughs> Creepitarians yeah, are real. Uh, are you real. experienced it up yeah. front. I experienced it. And um, it made you want to put a burqa But on. you're stronger mm -hmm. for it. You're coming back to the next I'm one. I'm stronger. I'm here. Because you were very borderline whether or not you are going to attend. Yeah, I did not know if I was going to attend. Now I'm for sure coming again, and I'm bringing all of my friends. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, it was a lot of fun. We're all going to uh, pile in the fusion and make the... Uh, <laughs> the fusion for uh, softball finals. No, yes. but uh, I don't know. It's been enlightening. I like... The po like the podcasts where the topics I don't know much about because I feel like I'm learning a lot that I can bring back to my college campus and well next one will be liberals. on the banks of the White River or whatever pageant you get involved in right something mm -hmm. like that yeah. Miss Muncie perfect N now uh, if creepers uh, creepertarians want to follow you where can they do that at follow me on all forms of social media at cat anagnos um, yeah please do not send me any pictures of yourself exposed 
I sent um, you a dick. Please, yeah. <laughs> dick pic, please respond. <laughs> PLZ respond. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thanks again. It's been fun. All right. Harry. I think Qatar should buy the last remaining Concords that are still around and just say, catch my uh, sonic booms. <laughs> suck my suck, suck, suck my sonic boom Saudi Arabia <laughs> and just like boom just blow out the glass of their city uh-huh. it's like they'll be too busy trying to repair it than trying to launch missiles on the Concord <laughs> I don't know but if uh, that's a brilliant idea or crazy <laughs> funny how close those two are <laughs> I know but uh, yeah it's a huge massive mess uh, the Middle East is still messed up it will always be messed up but I think Keeping both sides pointing guns at each other, it really does seem like that. I'm going to make an awful, uh, worse, uh, so another sci-fi reference back to Deep Space Nine, Star Trek Deep Space Nine, when Quark was trying to talk about how to, or the Ferengis, basically um, space libertarians, uh, <laughs> would talk about how you could keep, you could get peace for a bargain by just selling weapons to both sides because right now no one has an advantage. And as long as you make sure no one has an advantage, they'll always point guns at each other because the moment one of them gets hurt, the other one's got an advantage. So no one's willing to make a first move. Peace uh, out of bargain. Also, congratulations on New Hampshire where the Liberty LARPers got their internet. John point. Sununu, yeah. the governor who was. Mm-hmm. If you remember him, he was the attack dog for the Romney campaign. They trotted out all over the press with the mustache, really old and grumpy. And uh, he's signed uh, legislation to protect cyber uh, or uh, cryptocurrency from yep. uh, government regula- or, um Yep, regulation up in, in New Hampshire. Yep. Yeah. Yep, thanks to Darrell W. Perry and the uh, Liberty Lobby. Yeah, I'll tell you Liberty what, man. Like, you guys... I've never Kicking seen a butt. governor sign a bill to protect you Liberty LARPers internet points. <laughs> you know, that's your that's how you guys exchange goods digitally. There yep. was a pot wasn't there a pot thing signed in New Hampshire too? Uh getting close yeah to get the uh, marijuana marijuana yeah, actually no, that did get passed. Uh, it was, uh that happened right when um Gunther was being born. The uh you have to get pot gone through uh, on um New Hampshire. That went through. I, I heard that Which on the Free Coast Free Cast. I listened to an episode of that uh, on the Roger Paxton's uh, network, but mm-hmm. I don't live in the Free Coast, so it didn't mean anything to me. But uh, <laughs> congratulations to Roger Paxton and all our friends in the Free State Project for all their hard work on advancing liberty. We mm-hmm. call you Liberty LARPers with love. Uh, Jeremiah Morrill? Uh, I'm going to plug, uh, first of all, y'all better get the Middle East in order before... Uh, the November 26th Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. I don't want that to be canceled as the F1 <laughs> championship. So uh, that let's not, not let's not let that get messed up. Okay? Right. Y'all uh, be non interventionist enough. But uh, trust me, you're don't drop any like, bombs listen, on the don't race. Don't fuck track, up our right? race. We've had enough yeah. of you people and in your squabbles. Let shout us out to Ed done. Jones, the guy that should have been the Indy uh, 500 Rookie of the Year, who's yes. the uh, Englishman. But he's actually from uh, from the UAE, so he's the, uh, the uh, UAE IndyCar driver. It God really, bless colonialism. It really weirded me out that there was a UAE driver <laughs> named Ed Jones. Ed Jones, yes. He could have yeah. been from Cincinnati. Did I talk to this guy when I called in to the call center about my technical <laughs> issue? Yeah. <laughs> this is a lady <laughs> from Mumbai. <laughs> Hello, my name is Ed Jones. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so uh, the Boss Hog Liberty Podcast. Appreciate uh, the support we've gotten from Dear Leader and the uh, the, the Wall Network. Uh, I think we're growing faster than Wall did in the beginning, which is oh, only absolutely. only because of the uh, the tremendous support of uh, of this network and the listeners and coming over. Uh, so w- once again, if you're uh, you're listening here, Dakota is my Greg. I uh, I try to carry the show, but literally, uh, yeah, he's literally my he's baby Greg. Looks just like him. He's my son. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so uh, give that a listen. Uh, Tanner Purdue's on there from time to time. Definitely We've had some do. Folks it's excellent. From, uh, uh, from the Ball State newspaper, we have had a city councilman or a county councilman on who's going to be a regular with our show. So, uh, all kinds of interesting stuff over there. It's uh, it's probably not as policy focused as uh, as some of uh, what you come here for. Wall. It's retail politics, like the Boss Hog. But uh, yeah, it's it's about uh, the interaction of uh, how how our county government works and the local. We do dig into a little bit more of the LP stuff and state and actual party politics. You guys are more focused. That interests you guys more. Yeah, like absolutely. You guys are much more on the ground doing the you know hard work. Yeah, it's it's definitely a. Uh, it, it, it's a way for us to have uh, social connection. We are the talk of the uh, the county courthouse, which is fantastic oh. down there, in uh, in Newcastle, Indiana. It's uh, it's kind of like the uh, the local talk radio station now, uh, which has been fun. Uh, so yeah, uh, jump on Facebook, Boss Hog Liberty Podcast. Like us on there. You can message us. Follow myself, Dakota, and uh, Tanner. Tanner, <laughs> if uh, if he remembers to reply, it's uh, Tanner Purdue. We're and, engaged. Oh, is that who you're engaged? Yeah, to we currently? got engaged at the party. 
Carry on, sorry. Very nice. He's been sliding in DMs. I'm a cook. <laughs> <laughs> I'm currently eating this hamburger while staring Jeremiah in the eyes to establish dominance. <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not, this is only my ninth episode of The Big Show. Really? We're libertarians. I've recorded ten Boss Hog Liberty and nine. This is my ninth episode. Of, we have uh, to get uh, Jared past, past Bittner. Oh, yeah. Well, we That's know it's a long thing. drive for you. so It's a commute. It, yeah. Well, okay. I have appeared on two or three different podcasts that you will never air. Because we record them at the pool. They parties. were terrible, and they no longer exist. Now that people listen to the courthouse, do you want us to put them out? Right. Oh yes. Yeah. You you were dropping hard R's. <laughs> <laughs> Had Super R's. <laughs> Super well, I guess R's. we're not going to nominate Jeremiah for diversity position. <laughs> uh, I'm Greg. down with the struggle here. Um, what was the other thing? Uh, the other thing that happened this week? There were lots. There was lots, but uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to the uh, testimony tomorrow. But I think it'll be way more pomp and circumstance than anything we'll get out of it. Um, I just if he sticks to what that was, and if the way the questions were answered by uh, Coates and Rogers, as far as did you feel any undue pressure put upon you, um, or do you feel that you were directly asked to cease any type of investigation, I would be shocked. I just yeah. don't see him doing that because I don't think I think that it's one of those things where if I say you know I really hope that you would stop investigating someone or you you know could see your way to he's a good guy. I would be stunned because also in the testimony or in the thing he released, he talks about how he likes Flynn because he worked with him. Right. And he is a, that's why he said he is a good guy. Right. And I just don't think that based on all the, you know, the Russian, the revelation of the leaked report with the leaker, um, you know, that is so benign. The intrusion was so benign and it was not able to actually hack the election. I just don't see unless there's actual funds that they can prove tied to someone in a, an appointed position, that the president will actually um, ever be impeached. There's just not verifiable evidence. Man, I'll tell you, uh, when you're done, I'll go. No, that, that would be it. That would All be right. my read on the situation. Shiny yeah. object over here. I'm looking at Spangle's bookcase. The only book that I've read that's on your bookcase is Dirty Jokes and Beer by Drew Carey. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of libertarian books on there, Jerry. You haven't read... It's Drew Carey. He's a great, great libertarian author. Uh, so the funny thing about Dirty Jokes and Beer by Drew Carey... I was in sixth or seventh grade when that book came out, and I was the biggest Drew Carey fan. If you look on behind the fuck ISIS bumper sticker, there's a book, a little yellow book called Homebrewed, and it was a biography of Drew Carey. Drew Carey, when I was a kid, was one of my heroes. I love Drew Carey. I, uh, I just, I memorized all of his stand up. I watched the Drew Carey show religiously. I loved him. I still do. I think he's he's such a great guy, and he is a great supporter of libertarianism. Um, and, and I just identified a lot with him and, and uh, really liked him from the very beginning. And I loved that book, Dirty Jokes and Beer, as did uh, the uh, No Shirt, No Shirt, No Shirt, No Shoes, No Problem book by Jeff Foxworthy. Uh, when I was a kid, those were my two favorite books that I read all the time, along with All Over But the Shoutin' by Rick Bragg, which is my favorite book of all time. Um, but that book came out the day that we had a field trip to the Circle Center Mall downtown, and I uh, i mean, I must have been 10 or 12, somewhere around there. I remember. At the mall. Yeah, uh, from the middle school. Yeah, and so yeah. We, we went to, it was 7th grade, because that's where I met Brandon Van Hook, one of my best friends. And uh, so, I go to the Walden Books, I buy my copy of Dirty Jokes and Beer, and I stuff it into my shirt pocket, into my coat, so the teachers wouldn't see it. Because they were cracking down that day on all the kids who had all this South Park paraphernalia, which mm -hmm. had just come out and was just outrageous. People couldn't believe how out offensive this TV show was. Uh, and, America 1997, Kat. Right. Yeah. I was born. I was alive. <laughs> yeah, she was one years old. Um, and so Three months old. So I, I stuffed this in. I didn't want this book to get confiscated. I just, I just spent $23 on this. And so I'm sitting in the back of the bus. I sneak out my book, and there is a, and I'm thumbing through it, and there is a whole chapter on dick jokes. Dick jokes. The whole chapter of dick jokes, and I started telling dick jokes. It's like songs at the back of the for bus. comedians. <laughs> <laughs> and so you have to understand, like I met one of my best friends, somebody who was in my wedding that I loved, named Brandon, who uh, that day. But we didn't really become friends for a few more years till like tenth grade. I had no friends in 7th and 8th grade. I had no friends in 8th grade especially. I was completely isolated. Nobody liked me. 
And so the dirty jokes and beer, that day when I told dick jokes on the bus and people talked to me and they laughed, it was a revelation because it was a way for people to talk to me and like me. And so I started memorizing jokes and I told a few during eighth grade. Uh, and that down there somewhere is the Urkel joke book, Steve Urkel's joke book. Well, that's why I didn't like you because you only told racist jokes. Right. <laughs> so, so you kept saying women be shopping. Right. And they couldn't culturally identify. So anytime I could get anybody to talk to me in eighth grade, uh, I would tell them jokes and they'd laugh. And so between eighth and ninth grade, I memorized joke books. And to the point that when I got to freshman year, I had the joke of the day and people would come up to me. Girls would come up to me and ask me what the joke of the day was. You know, uh, all the classic jokes like, you know, why, you know, the, the more people you sleep with, the better car you get in heaven. Well, there goes your wife in a Cadillac. Those kind of jokes. Um, <laughs> also, some very offensive cross-dressers cross blow guy jokes. Like very, uh, but they killed. And by the end of you season, were an edge lord, right? Very much so. <laughs> an angsty so edge lord. I, I became, did teachers come up to you? Or did teachers start to come up to Spangle for the, the yes. joke of the day? Absolutely. We had cool teachers. Yeah, and so I became. I was homeschooled. I wouldn't know anything about it. So <laughs> it gave me an in with people. I it taught me how to interact with people, and so jokes, telling jokes, and and because I was always just a comedy nerd, I used to memorize every Bill Cosby record. Mm. Have a drink, cat. I would memorize every <laughs> George Carlin record. There she got it. I, I For just, some reason, she's delayed on the response tonight. I never collected baseball cards. I collected comedy tapes, and I memorized them all. And so I was ready once I hit ninth grade. And so I, uh, I, I credit that book specifically uh, with turning me into the extrovert that I am today and giving me friends because I, I ended up being one of the more I wasn't a popular kid by senior year but I was definitely well liked by everybody so I well, mean well then you I, I didn't see you because you joined the church I went to right as I was he, he, I was losing faith in God right when Spangle found it right absolutely <laughs> Jer coincidence opened, I think not. Jer opened right up to the dick joke I just wanted to see if there was going to be uh, be anything in here uh, highlighted my dick <laughs> is so big that my dick has a dick uh, read number 85 Harry what, 85? Yeah, <laughs> only Harry can really read these. My dick is so big, Las Vegas casinos fly it into town for free. <laughs> and when you're okay. in seventh grade, that is the funniest <laughs> shit you ever heard. So I, I'm shocked that you like you listened to like the old Bill Cosby records. I used to listen oh, yeah. to those growing up. Oh, Do you yeah. know what the joke of the day was in seventh grade for me? What? Uh, I called Justin Bieber gay, and he hit me with his purse. <laughs> Actually, that's pretty good. That's a pretty good seventh grade joke. Yeah. I know, right? So if you're a young kid out there, you're 10 years old, and you're listening to this podcast, uh, learn jokes. And, and I'll tell you what, I'm eight, I was eight years old when I wanted to go into radio and comedy, and I idolized the Bob and Tom show. And one of my life's uh, dreams has been fulfilled working for that show during the day. I love uh, being there. And so you just stick with it, and you, uh, you do what you want to do, and you can make it in life. Trust me. You'll grind it out and start a podcast of your own. Absolutely. <laughs> my dick has better credit than I do. <laughs> so well, no, you think about it. So, what seventh grader is listening to this? So my career has been <laughs> politics, media, talk radio, comedy, and it all converges here at We Are Libertarians, and this is this is what I'm going to do forever. So, so uh, with that, I just want to say thank you guys so much for supporting We Are Libertarians. Uh, it is a, a fulfillment of my dream. I know that, you know, this is my social circle. These are my friends. And we're so glad to get together and hang out uh, for several hours on a weeknight and uh, bring this to you. And when you guys share it, when you guys donate to us, when you guys write a nice review on iTunes, when you just send us a nice note, it means the world to us because we put a lot of work into this. A lot of research goes into this. Uh, a lot of houses are torn up for this, uh, and we do it so you can get something out of it. And we just thank you guys so much for uh, joining us and for sharing this podcast and for being a part of what we're building here at We Are Libertarians, especially 812 Farms and Martin Armory for their support. Thank you guys so much for joining us on this episode of We Are Libertarians. This is Chris Bangle, and as always, we're saying we promise to do want to do a redo better next time. And as always, we promise to do better next time. You'd think after 211 episodes. <laughs> it's better when you get it wrong. I know.